Hi, this is Peter Wooding, and this week's Christian Weekly News, we're joined by a number of Christians who've made bold steps of faith, including Jonathan Early Aidy, who took on the challenge last year of holding a National Day of Prayer and Worship at Wembley Stadium. And we speak to Peter Jones from Truth Exchange, whose mission is to bring biblical truth in a post-secular society. And we hear from UCB's daily devotional writer of the Word for Today, Bob Gass, about how his devotional was instrumental in bringing about Christian radio in this nation. Just over a year ago, 32,000 Christians gathered at Wembley Stadium for the National Day of Prayer and Worship. The man behind this amazing event, Dr. Jonathan Oliedi, now reflects on the wave of prayer that's taken place right across the country over the past year. We had a really wonderful time at Wembley and lots of people that came from over 90% of the nation, postcode wise, it was verified that over 90% attended from Wembley. They went back to their cities and their towns and then began to invite us to come to pray with them and unite their churches across towns and cities and regions. And that has gone very, very well because we have been on the road for about a year now and we have seen, I don't know, over, well over 10,000 people in small groups of 50s, 500s, um, a few thousands here, here and there. And one of the key things that we found that the lot, lots of people are actually coming together, joining together in prayer and people are praying more, people are praying the Lord's Prayer at 12 o'clock, people are connecting more, and that's why we're calling it Join the Dots. Um, the people are, are finding out other people in their city or in their region that they never thought or knew existed for the first time. So we're actually bringing people together in their own towns and their own villages or their own cities. Some of the parts of the church that don't come together normally or will not naturally fit together are coming together because of joining the dots. The young people have taken a baton of prayer right across the whole nation and have been praying every single week, every single day of every single week. So it's been amazing. Well, like I was sharing, um, lots of people have taken inspiration from Wembley. And we've come across a number of regions that have said, we want to put on a stadium event. If it could happen at Wembley, we have been uh, holding this vision to have a stadium event in our local city and region. And that's what happened with the people in St. Helens stroke um, Liverpool and they've combined together to have a joint event in their local rugby stadium in St Helens. Um, they've been holding that vision for many years and a small group, a prayer group have come together mobilizing the churches and they've asked us to come and support them in, in praying for their region and praying for the nation. So St Helens is actually a local event with a national wraparound if I could use that word. Um, I, it would be great to see um, people across the nation coming together at St. Helens. Um, it's going to be a smaller version of Wembley, but it's going to have the essential elements of praying for the nation, praying for local concerns, praying into the region. You can expect colorful expressions of Christianity, various forms of prayer, um, the anointing that comes on people when they pray together in unity. You can expect um, young people to be involved. You can expect um, um, children to enjoy the event, families to come together to pray. Um, you can expect a really inspiring time praying for the nation. I, I, I don't think there's anything quite like being in a place with thousands of other Christians worshiping together. It's, a, it's a kind of a taste of heaven. And only our stadiums can actually give that kind of effect, in my opinion. Well, there are going to be local um, and a number of local acts that are coming from, I, be, I believe, Dewsbury, um, Liverpool, and from St. Helens. But we've got our very own um, Godfrey Berto coming as well. And Neil Robinson is coming. I believe Lara Martin also is coming. And a number of wonderful um, worship leaders, national worship leaders from across the nation are also coming to that event. My expectation is that it's going to be a watershed event for the North. Um, the North usually talk about, we talk about this North-South um, divide. And to have something strategically happening, I believe is prophetically saying that the North are taking hold of their own destinies and are providing leadership for the nation. So for me, prophetically, it's a major statement that God is using the church in the North to actually rally the nation together in prayer. And I believe that if the church comes together and breaks through the political, cultural, and class divides, we can begin to see a change in our nation. So for me, 
uh, um, um, Saints in the Stadium is a, is a breakthrough event where local people are taking charge of their region, going into a stadium by faith and calling the nation together. Anyone else can do that from there. The, the mission is not to hold stadium events. That, that's, that we, we set out with a mission and a mandate to raise the temperature of prayer in the nation. And so I believe that what God is saying is that God is mobilizing individuals, small groups, churches, and whole regions to raise their level of prayer. And I believe that is what God is actually saying. He's actually um, mobilizing Christians to pray. Lots of more Christians are praying the Lord's Prayer at 12 o'clock. It's a small thing to do, but a significant step in uniting the church in prayer. Our hope is to see the nation mobilized in prayer. And that will begin to lay the foundation for a large-scale mission um, impact right across the nation. I, I hope to see evangelism begin to um, pick up in, in in, in, in different cities in the nation. I expect to see mission produce fruit of souls coming into the kingdom. Um, people say revival, people say outpouring, but I believe all this prayer is gonna to work together, not just for unity and not just for having wonderful events, but actually for there to be lots and lots of souls coming into the kingdom and for church attendance in the nation to rise and for this nation to have Lots of Christians going to church on Sunday and impacting their local region and impacting the nation for transformation. I think a lot of people are losing faith in, in politics uh, and, and government. I think the, um, um, some of the policies um, that are coming through um, Parliament have knocked people back. And there's lots of, loss of interest in the political process, voting process. And a lot of people are losing faith in political leadership. And what I believe joining the dots and many other movements are going to do is give the nation, give uh, uh, the church a, a pointer, leadership, to say not only should we be praying, but we should be acting to impact our local government, impact education, impact our schools, impact our streets. And if we can do that at a local level, at an individual level, I believe we can begin to transform our nation through the church. I believe we should be praying for our politicians, are praying for our prime minister, praying for our queen, that they pass less and less ungodly legislation, that they begin to go back to the foundations of the Christian faith that made Britain great. And if the church can stand up and begin to knock on the doors of parliament, rattle the gates of, of Buckingham Palace and begin to say, go back to your foundations, go back to the Christian heritage that we have. I believe we can begin to see a turnaround. And I believe that prayer is, prayer is the biggest weapon, the most powerful, potent weapon the church has to achieve that. Dr. Jonathan Oliedi there, convener of the National Day of Prayer. And he was speaking there about an exciting event coming up called Saints in the Stadium. Here's more on this event taking place in St. Helens. Welcome to Saints Rugby Stadium here in St. Helens. And we're really, really looking forward to seeing you on the 12th of October for the National Day of Prayer, Saints in the Stadium. And I want to ask you right at the outset, have you bought your tickets yet? Behind me is the stage where we'll be led in a range of worship from traditional hymns through to modern songs, being led in prayer by representatives from right across all the denominations and prayer networks. In this stadium, you can join thousands of people worshiping and praying together in unity, celebrating God's love and goodness, and seeking Him for a fresh move of His Holy Spirit. All the catering kiosks can be open in the stadium. They'll be signing for the deaf, the room to feed the baby, car parks, coach parking on site, all the town centre car parks will be open. Come and be part of an amazing day of worship and of prayer. Book your tickets, use the phone line 01744 455052 or book online. We're looking forward to joining with you 12th of October, 11 o'clock till 4, here for Saints in the Stadium, National Day of Prayer and Worship 2013. Almost two decades ago, Bob Gass started writing the daily devotional booklet, Word for Today, 
Little did he realize 20 years later that this booklet would be instrumental in bringing about Christian radio in the nation, something the government had banned for many years. Here's Bob Gass at a recent event at the Apollo Theatre in Manchester. The word for today, next year, marks the 20th anniversary. And uh, to God be the glory. Great things he has done. Uh, what a journey and how God has used it. And I keep meeting people whose lives are impacted. And I'm grateful to God that he guided us on this one. Uh, you know, it goes back to the birth of, really, of the launching of UCB, when the challenge was, how do you change British law so that Christians can own and operate their own stations like everybody else? And uh, how do you get uh, a group of supporters? Paul, in Philippians 4.13, spoke of his partners. He said, you Philippians became my partners in giving. Not once, but again, repeatedly, you sent support. They were committed to Paul, and because of their prayers and their commitment, he was able to cover Asia with the gospel all the way to the throne of Caesar but he acknowledged that he needed others to do it. And UCB, as any God-called ministry, always needs partners, people who stand with it. So we printed the first edition of Word for Today, and I suggested to the guys at UCB, go to venues, church gatherings, conferences, set up a card table. When people walk by, say, hey, would you like a free daily devotional? If they say, yeah, they give them a three by five card and say, hey, could we have your name and address? Yep. And that's what they did. And that's as simple as it started. They printed 3,000 copies and it just grew and grew. Till today I think they've 1.3 million readers here in the UK and uh, probably half a million names, you know, on their support base. And, so, and God used the devotional to do that. So they're companion ministries, the word for today. UCB, and that's replicated itself now throughout the world. It's kind of become a model for helping to finance the vision God gives for Christian broadcasting in countries. I still write at my kitchen table or out in my screened-in porch. A uh, yellow legal pad, my wife calls me uh, a digital dinosaur <laughs> because I don't I have managed at last to use an iPad, but I don't when I'm writing. And uh, just for point of interest, uh, I edit every day you read 15 times. And I am now written before I left to come here. Uh, I'd set a goal to write 10 years of brand new material in advance. And I just finished the September, October, November of 2023, before I got in the plane to come here. So if you wonder what I'm doing with my free time, <laughs> that's what I do. And De Debbie's good for me because I love what I do so much I would do it seven days a week with no balance and no breaks. Because it's my favorite thing to do, is get in that word right. The other days when I get discoveries in the scripture, I am shouting, I'm walking around the floor preaching, I'm in tears, and I want to go out in the street and stop somebody and say, you've got to hear, you've got to hear this. And I think that's why an anointing is transferable. And if God gives you his word, 